What up, y'all? Welcome back to another episode of the Heart of a Lion podcast. I am your host, Jay, and you have just stepped into the lion's den. If this is your first time tuning in, then go ahead and hit that follow the subscribe button from wherever you're listening to the podcast. And if you're back, well, welcome back. <laughs> I know it's been a, a few days or a few weeks, actually, since I've uh, last recorded an episode, but... Life's been busy, <laughs> to say the least. Um, I had actually recorded an episode. Um, I had recorded an episode to release, and I had like poured my heart and my soul into that episode because it was my pre. I was talking about my pre Jesus days, and you know, just my testimony from going from where I was to to you know becoming a follower of Jesus and when I went back and listened to the audio on it I was like dang I could not release this <laughs> I could not release that at all I, I just I wasn't happy with it I recorded it on my phone and my sister Aurelia always tells me that well not just her but she's one of the main people who always tells me that my phone audio sucks um but uh, the, the quality just wasn't there and I ha didn't have a chance to record at my normal studio because it was closed that week um, And I was just like, I'll just have to do this and it did not pay off at all And then, you know, just getting busy with work and different things like that as well as I also got sick and that sucked but you know, nonetheless here I am and I don't know what we're gonna talk about because you know, usually I do notes and different things like that and say, hey, we're going to talk about this or hey, we're going to talk about that, whatever. But I don't I have a few things to talk about, but nothing written down. And I just wanted to go with the flow of however I feel the Holy Spirit lead me, like whatever direction we're going to go in. That's the direction we're going to go in. And off the top, I feel like there's a couple different directions I want to go today. And the first I want to talk about is evangelism. Um so I have never been somebody who's considered myself an evangelist, like at all, like <laughs> I, not to say like, that's not my ministry, but I would always say like, I am nobody's evangelist. You want to uh, have an evangelism event? Cool. Y'all have an evangelism event. Let me know how it goes. I'm not the, you know, go door to door person. I guess just for me, that's not, that's just not my ministry. You know, um, that's the way I looked at it. Um, you know, they, you know, they say some plant, some water, whatever, you know, I, I'm, I'm the watering type, you know, you go catch the fish and I'll help train them and groom them or whatever we need to do. Like, yeah, I'm cool with that, but you know, the, uh, to go out and minister to people, um, about Jesus, like for me, it's like, ah, I'd rather just evangelize with my lifestyle, you know, let people see how I live and let that, let that be my evangelism. Um, to help uh, lead them to Christ. And um, I, I, I couldn't tell people, like if you asked me what the Great Commission was, I was like, man, I know it's in the Bible. <laughs> For me, it's just, it's never been a core verse. Uh, now I know what it is. I, I know um, I know that it's in Matthew 28, uh, verse 19. Uh, Therefore go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in, in the name of the Father and the Son of the Holy Spirit and teaching them to obey everything I, uh, I have commanded you like I know that now um, I didn't know where it was before did it does it make me less of a Christian I'd say no I just again I didn't think that that was my ministry um, and I say all that to say a couple last few weeks I'll say three weeks ago now the three weeks ago from the time of this recording um, I felt as though the Lord really put it on my heart like started like speaking to me about evangelism and I didn't know why it was just it was weird because like, again I don't think about evangelism because I never thought, thought of myself as that um, but he put it on my heart for evangelism. He started, started to make me think about it more and more. And I started asking myself the question, you know, what would I say? Or maybe God just put it on my heart to, you know, questioning me. What would I say to somebody if I had to give them my testimony or in 90 seconds or less, you know, how would I be able to relate to them? For a week and a half, I had no answer. Absolutely no answer couldn't come up with anything and it was just like man I don't know what I would say and then one day at my job which mind you it's not uncommon for this to happen at my job um, but one day at my job there was you know somebody or a, a group of people who were out evangelizing and 
essentially this group of people and they have people like this <laughs> everywhere but this group of people they're the type that you know to come out and essentially condemn all the non-believers to hell um for their lifestyle this that and the third whatever and it's not my first time I've seen this group. It, I'm sure it won't be the last, but I saw them and um, I stopped for a minute. And well, no, I take that. I take that back. I did not stop. I kept walking. I just walked past the crowd. Normally, I stop for a minute and then I just you know keep walking. So I, I saw them. I kept walking, and on my way back, I saw them and I stopped again, or I stopped this time. And when I stopped. Uh, I was just listening to, it was a young young guy and an older guy. I think it was just two of them this time. And the young guy was uh, saying he was, uh, he was telling his testimony. I won't say sharing his testimony. He was telling his testimony. And he wasn't really telling the full testimony. Um, he just kept saying, I used to be trans and now I'm not. I used to be trans and now I'm not. Uh, repent or go to hell. Repent or go to hell. Like that's all he kept saying. And the way he was going about it, like the crowd was not receptive at all. And he was standing up on a platform. And I remember he got down off the platform to go talk to the, his other, to the, to the guy that was with them. And the crowd, I heard one of the guys say, oh, he was standing up here. Let's all sit down. So when he comes back, he can't stand up here. So when he came back, like they, like they, he filled in so he could not sit, um, stand up on a platform anymore. And he kept, you know, talking real loud and he had his microphone that he was talking into. And but there was another guy out there from the LGBTQ community who had his own microphone. So every time he, um, the Christian guy would talk, the LGBTQ guy would talk. And it, 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 for me, it was starting to get out of hand, like just the way um, he was going about it. And then the way the way they were responding, it was almost like I'm not saying that he was hating them, but the way he was responding, it was almost like. He was coming in in a non-receptive way and they were responding with hate, um, so to speak. You know, they were talking over, uh, they were, you know, talking at him, asking him about, you know, different scriptures and things like that. And he could not ask him about scriptures, but like they were saying, like, what does the Bible say about this? Or why does the Bible say this? Uh, you know, in, in different things. And it seemed like he couldn't answer the questions. I'm not saying that he couldn't. But his, the way in he, which he responded, it seems as, as though he couldn't answer the question. And slowly but surely, it just started getting out of hand. So I felt it in my spirit to say something to him. And uh, I actually, you know, I, so I walked up and I kind of motioned for him and he he walked over to me. And I said, I said to him, I said, hey, I love what you're doing. Uh, I love that you're out here. I think it's great that you're out here evangelizing. And then I said to him, Delivery is also important. How you deliver the message is also important. You have to come with compassion. And I said that, and then he got super defensive. He said, I, I am out here, I come with compassion. I said, yeah, but you got to come in love too. You know, I said, I'm not saying that you have to agree with them, uh, with, with what they're saying, or even agree with what they believe, but how you deliver your message matters. And I'm only talking loud enough for him to hear me. Um, but he, because he got defensive, he started getting loud and he said, well, if you're my brother, uh, then you wouldn't come at me like this. If you're, if you're, if you're a Christian brother, then you would be standing with me, not against me. I was like, I'm not standing against you. I'm, I'm coming to you in a way, um, to try to reach you so you can reach them. And he was like, no, you're not. You're coming against me. And why wouldn't you pull me to the side one-on-one? -on -one? I was like, I did put you to the side one-on-one. -on -one. He's like, no, you're trying to embarrass me. I said, no, I came to you, uh, I came to you to have the conversation one-on-one. -on -one. You're now talking loud enough where everybody can hear us. And that, that was never my intention. And he just kept talking over me. He's like, well, no, I'm a, I'm a really a Christian. I'm about this. Like I'm out here. I'm evangelizing. What do you do? I'm preaching the gospel. What do you do? Do you preach the gospel? It doesn't look like it. Like he was saying things like this and the crowd started the crowd, the same crowd that he was trying to reach started then saying, well, you know, let him talk. You're talking over him. Uh, listen to him. You're not listening to him. Da, 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 da. Like saying this in defense of me. And, you know, he just kept going on and on. And again, I had tried to talk to him, but then I started thinking about tw Proverbs 26, four, which says, do not answer a fool according to his folly or you yourself will be just like him. Also like the saying that says, do not argue with a fool or from a distance, nobody will be able to tell the difference. Um, so it got to a point, I just said, 
God bless you. And I walked away and I went, I went on by my business, you know, went on by my business the next day. Um, back at work and mind you, I am never, I'm never at work on Wednesdays, but I was at work on this particular Wednesday and I, I was walking, get my little exercise in and I saw the crowd again. I just walked past it this time and on my way back, I was just going to walk past it again. Well, I take that back. Let me rewind a little bit. That same night of the initial meeting, um, I actually, I feel like God revealed to me what I would say in those situations. And it helped me to realize that when you give your testimony to somebody, your testimony or your testimony and or how you evangelize should should be should be different or sometimes is different based on who your audience is. Like I can't, you know, my audience here at my job would be different from my from my audience of who I grew up with and who I grew up around, you know, so how I deliver the testimony might be a little different or, or what I share might be a little different. So God gave me um, how I would give my testimony on that particular, um, that particular evening. And I told myself, I was like, well, I'm gonna go tomorrow and I'm gonna be ready to give my testimony. You know, I, I'm gonna see if I can talk and give my testimony. Um, that day comes and when the time came, I was like, yeah, nah, I just don't feel it. <laughs> <laughs> not that I didn't feel like God, um, not that I didn't want to do what God told me to do, but I feel like God prepared me so that way, if I'm, if I'm asked that I'll be ready to give it. And when the time came, I just feel like he was like, okay, I just needed to make sure that you would be ready. So anyway, I passed by the crowd. I, when I came back, I saw the guy and I made eye contact with him. And I just gave him the salute sign and he acknowledged me. And then I kept walking. And then he actually went out of his way to come talk to me. And the first thing that he said when I saw him was, you know, I'm, I'm sorry. I apologize for how I acted yesterday. And he said, and I was, I was shocked. <laughs> I was shocked. Um, and the funny thing is the day before I told my wife about the, the whole thing. And I said, yes, yeah, it just seemed like, you know, he just, he didn't receive or didn't care to hear what I had to say. And she's like, well, you never know. Maybe he'll go home and he'll process it. Da, 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 da. And I was like, yeah, that's true. Sure enough. He, I guess he went, he went home and processed it. Cause he, that next day he came back and he apologized to me. He said, um, you know, he apologized. He, he said that he just feels, you know, he was a, a bit flustered. There was a lot going on. There was a large crowd and, um, there was just so much going on that he just got caught up in the hype of it. And, um, because of that, you know, he was defensive and thought that I was attacking him when that wasn't the case. Um, so it, it, it just allowed, you know, some vulnerability there. And he said, he said, you know, so today I came with more compassion and because I came with more, co more compassion, I was able to reach more people. I was able, you know, to have conversations, heart heartfelt conversations with them. I was able, you know, to take a picture with, you know, with somebody and uh, us have a heartfelt conversation. I w it, 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 to me, it was just, it showed me why God had me say something in the first place. Like it was never like, this is his ministry. Like this is what he does. He goes out to evangelize. I again, I don't I don't consider myself an evangelist, but God used me in a way to come to him in love to say, "Hey, I love what you're doing, but maybe there's a different approach." And because I went to him and he then received it, he was able not to change his approach and and become more effective and reach more people. Now, to go out from there. It's like it to me, it was just, it was so amazing. It just made me think like nobody may ever know the impact that God used me to have on this one man. But now God was able to have an impact on this one man to have a greater impact on far more people because of him changing up his approach. And, you know, so after he was talking, I, I began to ask him because you know, the day before he had this poster again saying, you know, I was a trans and now I'm not. I was like, so what, like, what is your testimony? And he went on to tell me, he's like, you know, oh, I was sexually molested um, as a kid. And, um, you know, I then went on to have relations with men and women. Um, I wanted, he said, I was scheduled to have surgery um, to change myself from a man to a woman. And I was engaged to a man. And he said that I had an encounter with God. And to me, it was just like, I, I was floored by his testimony to hear his testimony, just a little bit that he shared. He told me I can check out the rest on YouTube, which I still have not checked out and I will. Um, 
but I just thought it was amazing to hear what he had to say and and, and how again the, the impact that he was able to have just on me the second day by the way he shared it versus the first day when he said I used to be this now I'm this repent or go to hell and now it's hey this is what I went through uh, because of what I went through this is what I these are the decisions I was making but then I had an encounter with Jesus and um, man it just showed me how real God is, but how, how, how much of an impact we can, we can have when we allow the love of God to flow through us. And so many people will say, we, you know, well, you, you know, don't get caught up on, on, on the messenger. Don't get caught up on the messenger. Just receive the message or take the meat and spit out the bone. Da, 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 da. And it's like true, true. But at the same time, the way I deliver a message, you know, it's almost like, like most people say that they love bone in meat better than um, boneless. But for the sake of my argument or for the sake of what I'm saying, when we when we allow God to use us, there should never be any reason for for anybody to, to spit anything out. Like we should deliver it as boneless meat. You know, we should be able to deliver it in such a way where um, a person can look back and say, man, like I don't. Like I receive all of that, not, you know, I heard what they had to say, but I don't like the way they deliver it. I don't like the way they looked at me. I don't like this. I don't like that. Like there shouldn't be so many negatives when, when we deliver a message or we, or when we allow God to use us, you know, if, 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 if there are so many negatives or, but this, but that, then we sometimes have to look at ourselves and say, Hey, like, what can I do differently to become more effective? Again, I'm not, I'm, I'm all for, I, I love that the fact that we have people who go out, go out here and evangelize. I love people who go out and minister the gospel and tell people about Jesus or, or do this, that, and the third. But again, it's how you approach the situation. It's how you, um, it's how you go about it because, you know, h- how am I supposed to reach somebody if I just come at them like a storm? How am I supposed to reach them if I'm coming at them, um, you know, sounding like I'm anger or sounding like I hate them. You know, again, Jesus delivered his words and it was what it was and they hated him for it. You know, just, I mean, it, it makes it makes me think about this. It makes me think about Jackie Hill Perry. Jackie Hill Perry is somebody who I've never heard raise her voice. I've never heard her raise her voice at all, <laughs> like at all. But for some reason, people still find a way to hate her. And I'm, I'm using her as an example because some people will say, well, if they're going to hate me anyway, I'm just going to deliver it the way, the, the way I feel it, or I'm just going to deliver it the way God gave it to me, you know, but sometimes word, a word needs to be refined. You know, your reach is still far greater when you come with compassion. Your reach is still far greater when it comes with love. I'm not saying that there's not a time and a place, you know, to switch things up, you know, or to, as some people love to use an excuse to flip tables. But Jesus didn't flip a table everywhere he went. And some people are trying to flip a table everywhere they go. And that's just not how we're called to be. Like, that's not how we're, you know, what we're called to do. You know, to, to say, you know, he flipped tables, you know, that that means, you know, I'm supposed to flip a table and yell at, and yell at everybody about Jesus when I go to the grocery store. I'm supposed to flip tables and yell at people when I come to work or, or, or go to the movies. Like, no, like he didn't do that. He ministered to people wherever he went, yes, but the way he went about it, in many many cases, it was different everywhere he went. You know, so we have to change the narrative of, of, of saying, um, uh, we have to change the narrative of, of, of just about, you know, taking in the meat and spinning out the bones. How you deliver it matters. How you deliver the mail matters. If my mailman throws my mail at me, it throws my mail at my front door, I'm gonna feel like throwing it back. <laughs> and that's just me just being honest. You know, but if he like gently puts it in my mailbox or he gently puts it in my hand, I'm gonna receive that mail far, far more with far more respect and far more love than if he threw it at me. So it's it's all about perspective. It is definitely all about perspective. And again, you know, I thank God that I was able to reach the young brother. His name is Elijah. So if y'all ever you know, think about him, then y'all just pray for Elijah. Cause again, I respect the young man for being out there doing what he was doing. I respect the young man for having a conversation with me and then coming back and saying, Hey, I was wrong. 
you know, and then sharing his testimony with me and still being out there. I thought it was also funny too, because when he, the first day he was out there with a small microphone, the second day he came back with a bullhorn. He's like, y'all not going to talk over me today. <laughs> but even the way he was on the bullhorn was completely different. He wasn't saying repent or go to hell. You know, he was, he was, gen, he was talking people and he was talking to people who from all different types of backgrounds, who he did not agree with about what the Bible says on biblical principles, on biblical repentance, uh, turning away from sin and coming to Jesus. And again, the impact was different because of how, of what his approach was. So sometimes just in our lives on a daily basis, we have to, we have to change things up. You know, we can't always do things the way we did them before just because, you know, or this is how I've always done it. No, it don't matter. Or this is how I've always been. Well, you need to change. I don't know anybody who I don't know anybody who is genuinely happy or has genuinely good people around them who has stayed the same their whole life. To me, that sounds like a miserable person, but that's just me. <laughs> that's just me, you know, but um. That's it. That's all I got for y'all today. Uh, how we evangelize is important. Evangelizing is important, but how we evangelize is also important. And your net, your reach will be far greater, far, far greater if you if your delivery is one with compassion versus one versus one with fire, hell, and brimstone. You know, you it's hard to scale it's it's hard to scare somebody out of hell that's content with going there. And it the the sad and I say that because many of the of the of the people who I heard in the crowd on the first day were were laughing and joking about going to hell. So my again, it's hard to scare somebody to scare somebody out of hell that's already content with going there. That's why your approach needs to be different. You can't have the same approach every single where you go. You know, think about if if Walmart tried to be like Target and everything that do. I take that back. Let's switch that around. Think about if Target tried to be like Walmart in everything that they do. No, Target has a different marketing, different campaign, different whatever than Walmart, and that's why people love Target. You know, separately from Walmart or more than Walmart. If what like I'm just I'm using these as an examples to say like you can't. Um, maybe that was a bad example. Y'all get what I'm trying to say. You can't, you can't be the same everywhere, every single place you go. <laughs> you can't be the same every single place you go. Sometimes you got to switch things up. You know, sometimes you have to go in with peace. Sometimes you have to go in with love. Sometimes you got to go in with a little rah, rah, and it just is what it is. But, but most importantly, most importantly, most importantly, go in with the way that, that God sends you. I think so many times we take the word and say, well, this is what the word says. But did God tell you to go the way that you're going? We hear what the word says. Some many of us know what the word says, but how did God tell you to deliver the word? Because at the end of the day, that is what matters. It don't matter if you smack somebody upside the head with the Bible. How did God tell you to deliver the message from the Bible? So that's all I'm saying. I'm getting riled up talking about this, y'all, but. Anyway, that's all I got for y'all today. Thank y'all for tuning in again. It feels good to record another episode. I'm not going to lie. Before I got to this point of recording this episode today, I was starting to feel like, man, I don't feel like doing it. But I just knew it was enemy lying to me, you know, trying to get me in my feelings and about whatever. I was like, but I feel good about this. Like, I feel like rejuvenated now recording this episode and just feel like I'm ready to get back at it. So we gonna have more content we gonna have more episodes coming soon i got a lot more for y'all a lot more for y'all and um that's it we out have a great and blessed week y'all until next time <laughs>